Maggie, you're next. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I wish we had more time. Good evening. My name is Maggie Lang, and I have the pleasure of coordinating the CERT program for Marin County. How many CERT members are here tonight? Oh, that's Thank you. CERT is Community Emergency Response Team. It's a national program under FEMA and Citizens Corps. Uh, there are probably 650 CERTs in the country, CERT groups in every state. It started in Los Angeles about 30, over 30 years ago. And it's a, a program that provides special skills for residents, anyone, 14 to 90 years old, go through the classes uh, in Marin. And it gives you skills so that as we step forward to help each other, which we know will happen in all disasters, we all forget our little grudges in the neighborhood and we help each other, which is what we should do. But what the observation is, is that sometimes people get themselves hurt doing that. So the program was started in order to provide skills so that you can stay safe. So the idea is we want everyone to be a survivor, not another victim. And that's what the CERT program does. So we have training. It's an 18-hour training. We offer 10 to 12 classes a year all around um, the county. And um, provide those skills in fire suppression, putting out small fires with a fire extinguisher. How many of y'all have never used a fire extinguisher? <laughs> I hadn't either. I had never used a fire extinguisher before I took them home. So it's wonderfully empowering to see how you use a fire extinguisher in something so simple, a small fire that can become a big fire. Uh, we also learn about what are the ways of looking at a building if we hear our neighbor yelling from inside after an earthquake and is it safe for us to go in. We don't want to just charge in and again become another victim in an aftershock. Uh, we talk about disaster psychology. If you're stepping forward after a disaster to help your neighbors, they've been through a traumatic event as have you. And how do you help yourself and support yourself and your team? Because we always work, we use the buddy system, we always work as a team, as well as the folks that you're stepping forward to help. What are the things we think about when we're supporting people? We talk about first aid, and this is first aid with a perspective on our wonderful fire department and paramedics will not be there in four minutes. So if we're in a post-earthquake situation, it may be some time before we have our professionals arrive. And that's what starts up. We're there between the event and when our professionals arrive. We are not professional responders, we're called citizen first responders. So we talk about first aid, search and rescue, disaster psychology, a little bit of terrorism, which is just understanding what the things to look for, not that there's necessarily a role for your average resident in a terrorist response. So I present that as a program for everyone Anyone here is welcome to join. There's a role for everyone in CERT. And we recertify every four years. Elaine was mentioning we'll be in the back. Any of you CERTs who had, took it over four years ago, you need to recertify, which is very simple. That reactivates your disaster service worker status, so you are covered by workers comp. If you are in, injured in a declared local disaster or in a training. So we want to make sure that you're covered in that situation. And I, and I want to just take a short time and see if there are questions that you have. We have sign-ups in the back. Uh, we've completed our classes for the year, but we'll start again in February. We'd like to set a goal of one CERT member for every 20 households. So on your street, we'd love to have folks who have special skills who can um, check in with, how, with neighbors, just go door to door. Your responsibility is yourself and your family first and your immediate neighbors. And if you choose to step forward and check on a broader scope in some communities, there are some guidelines. There are guidelines for that. So one certain number of 20 households, I encourage everybody to take it. There's a role for everyone. Um, we've had folks who come in with mobility issues and they've assumed roles that have been incredibly helpful. So I wanted to see if there were any questions you have. Some of the brochures we have in the back, we encourage everyone to sign up for Alert Marin, which is our not reverse 911 notification for the county, and the flyers are in the back. So you want to know if something's happening, you want the very first uh, important information to come out to you so you know how to respond. 
We also have some brochures in the program and ask that you pick one up and give it to one person or take it home yourself. And we also have some cards that have um, the months of the schedule for every year that is saying the dates will be different for 2019. We'll start again in February. So I wanted to see if you have any questions. And I'm going to come out there and talk to you. Okay. okay. Um, well, I did one of these in Berkeley. Yes. Years, so it's all over the country. Okay, so it's pretty universal. Exactly. All based on FEMA. Yeah. And uh, Scott was particularly focused on earthquake preparedness. Well, basically, we talk about response to earthquake because we think if we can respond to that, we can respond to many things. We have a very strong foundation on emergency preparedness, as we've spoken about before, because if you can't take care of yourself and you don't have a plan, you can't step forward and help anybody else. Mm -hmm. So there's so basically two tracks. One is that you stay at home, shelter in place for five to seven days, such as post-earthquake, your home may be not quite okay to go back in, but your property may be safe. So you may be uh, camping out. How many of y'all are campers and have camping gear? So that's an excellent beginning to your emergency supplies. You may be camping out on your back door. And the other is evacuation. So if you have to go, go early. Don't wait for the mandatory <coughs> evacuation notice, but leave early and think about what you're gonna take with you. So those are two tracks that we've spent a lot of time talking about. Thank you. Do you have any questions? It's great to be with you. Thank you. May, um, up until this point, we've been thinking about earthquakes as being a certain event where, where uh, when the uh, first responders are preoccupied and, and so we have to sort of fend for ourselves and use our search training to help, <coughs> help, help our neighbors. Right. But now with the advent of the fire seasons we had the uh, last couple of years, uh, we're all thinking about wildfire. So I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the role of search in the event of a major problem. Right. There's not, um, we should do a joint talk here, but um, there's not a, a real role for search in a response to a fire. But what happened last fall is we had a lot of people who wanted to help, a lot of people who wanted to volunteer, and that includes search. So we had some search who were working in Red Cross shelters, for example. Um, there were search who worked up in Napa, uh, in an emergency volunteer center who were coordinating folks who showed up wanting to help. So those are support roles. I think the main thing that we think about with CERT is make sure your neighbors have a plan and that if you are evacuating, know two ways to get out of your neighborhood, uh, two directions and two modes, they say. You may be walking, you may be driving, you might be riding a bicycle. So those are all things to take care of our neighbors, and that is sort of public education and response. So we don't really have an official role in a fire response, but we have a support role. Elaine says I have to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Maggie.